There are a lot of supplements out there that quite frankly are just a waste of money. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the six supplements that I feel like you should honestly avoid. And the cool thing about this video is unlike other videos that are out there, I'm gonna give you alternatives. I wanna give you some options instead of what I'm gonna tell you to avoid because I don't want it to just be negative. So let's go ahead and let's dive right into the six supplements that you should ultimately avoid. You're tuned in to the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos all the time. Go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and then go ahead and hit that little bell icon. It's gonna allow you to turn on notifications so you get a little bing on your phone every time I post a new video or do a live broadcast. Without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive right in to save some time. The first one that I feel like you should avoid is CLA, also known as conjugated linoleic acid. Now, this supplement tends to go through waves. It gets really popular and then it kind of goes away. Then it gets popular again and it's marketed as a heavy fat loss supplement. And all CLA is, is a particular kind of omega-6 fatty acid. Generally speaking, I don't like omega-6s. I don't like them at all, but sometimes they have a place. Now, a true conjugated linoleic acid is a form of a trans fat. And I know that sounds scary and bad, but not all trans fats are bad. There are some that are actually functional within the body. So a true CLA fat is what is called a CIS-9 and a trans-11 fat. Okay, now this is the kind of CLA that's gonna come from saturated fat in animal sources, or usually from the, the ruminants, like when you look at the intestinal tract of an animal, things like that. So the point is, is CLA is naturally occurring when you get it from animal fats. Now, when you look at a CLA supplement, all that is is altered safflower or sunflower oil. So we're looking at usually a pretty low quality omega-6 oil that's just being altered to become conjugated. So it's basically, they're making it a trans fat. Okay, trans fats are not good for our bodies unless they're coming from a natural source. When we chemically alter something to make it a trans fat, it's not good. So does that mean that CLA doesn't work? Well, no, CLA still works because it ultimately reduces the amount of triglycerides that go into storage. But the problem is when we take CLA in a supplement form that is just chemically altered, it also raises a bunch of pro-inflammatory cytokines and it causes a bunch of mitochondrial uh, free radical oxidation. So we don't want this because it's gonna actually decrease performance. So even though studies show you see a slight increase in overall fat loss, the long-term effect is much more negative. You're gonna slow down your fat loss in the long-term. So what do you use instead? Well, honestly, it's eating higher fat cuts of meat or using the, uh, you know, every kind of cut of meat. So if you eat organ meats, which I know not everyone does, and I know it isn't the most attractive supplement or the most attractive alternative to this, but that's probably gonna be one of the better ways to get CLA. The thing is, is most of the time you're going to get enough conjugated linoleic acid from a good diet in the first place. So you're actually better off to go ahead and get omega-3s in which are, have nothing to do with CLAs, but you're better off to get omega-3s in from a supplement and just eat a fair bit of meat so that you actually get that result. Now, I know that's not the best alternative, but trust me, we'll get down to the other ones and they'll be a little bit more clear cut. The next one is going to be weight gainers. Any kind of weight gainer that's out there is usually junk. Weight gainers are just designed to load us up with calories. So not something we really wanna be doing, right? We don't wanna just have a bunch of high glycemic carbohydrates and a bunch of high fat stuff in one combo, right? Usually when we spike our insulin, if we have a bunch of high glycemic carbs like dextrose or maltodextrin, it's gonna spike our insulin really high. Then we're gonna have usually some kind of fat that's in a weight gainer too. The problem is we spike our insulin really high and then the fat's gonna go into storage too. So weight gainers do make you gain weight, but they make you gain a bunch of fat and even worse, they make you gain a bunch of inflammation. So they're super low quality. So here's what I recommend you do instead. And honestly, it's gonna save you a lot of money and save you a lot of heartache. You're going to wanna get your fats, get your extra calories from omega-3 sources. And I know I've said this twice already, but get your fats from sockeye salmon, from wild caught salmon, from higher fat cuts of meat, things like that. Get your extra calories that way because the weight that you gain is going to be a lot more effective and beneficial. See, what's interesting is that omega-3s do not store as fat, or at least not very easily. They store as what are called phospholipid bilayers. So basically within our cells, we have membranes and these membranes are made up of omega-3s in a lot of ways. The omega-3s allow the membrane flexibility and the fluidity of a cell, which means the cells can communicate with one another. So what happens is when we consume a bunch of excess fats in the way of omega-3s because we're eating good quality food, those extra fats will still help us gain weight but what they're gonna do is they're gonna help support our cellular function so that the other calories from the food that we eat can actually build muscle. 
rather than just taking the calories from fat and storing it, we're taking the calories and putting them into a the right place. When you look at adipose tissue, which is the storage form of fat, usually it's like less than 1% is made up of omega-3s. So adipose tissue is very little omega-3. We don't store a lot of it. So go to town on that. Get your calories that way. It's a better solution. Next up is going to be the branch chain amino acids. Okay, people hate on me for talking about this one because I think people just love their BCAAs because they have this false sense of security with them. They feel like their BCAAs are preserving their muscle. Their BCAAs are preserving their um, just overall energy levels and things like that. No, branch chain amino acids are something very, very simple and cheap. They're just three simple amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And they are a huge profit leader for a lot of these companies. So they pump them out and they make people think that they're just I don't know, God's gift to everything. Don't worry about the BCAAs. As a matter of fact, in addition to being a waste of money, they actually spike your insulin. So studies have shown that they cause a secretion of insulin from our beta cells in our pancreas. So our beta cells release insulin as a response to food. So people think that they take BCAAs and that they're still in a fasted state. So if you do fasted cardio in the morning, but you have your BCAAs, you're not really fasted because the leucine that is in BCAAs spikes your insulin. When that insulin spikes, it shuts off glucagon. Now, let me just make this very simple. Insulin and glucagon are in a constant war with each other. Insulin turns off glucagon. Glucagon is a response to insulin being gone. When glucagon is in place, we're burning fat. When glucagon is not in place and insulin is in place, we're storing fat. I'm not saying that BCAAs are gonna make you store fat, but what I am saying is they're gonna turn off fat burning temporarily. So just be very careful. You see, what they do is they modulate adrenogenic A2 activity through the mTOR pathway. And for those of you that are science nerds, I'm saying this for you. Basically, it turns on mTOR. In our bodies, we have either fat burning mode, okay, cyclic adenosine monophosphate mode, or we have mTOR mode, mammalian target of rapamycin mode. mTOR mode is anabolic, building muscle, building tissue also building fat. CAMP mode, cyclic adenosine monophosphate mode, is fat burning, okay? It doesn't mean we're burning muscle, but we're burning fat. We wanna be on the CAMP side, not on the mTOR side, if we're trying to burn fat. The only time that BCAAs are going to be good is if you take them along with an actual meal, because then what it's gonna do is it's gonna heighten the overall protein availability or the amino acid availability of that meal. So what do you do instead? Quite honestly, if you're trying to preserve muscle, utilize a ketogenic diet or a low carb, high fat diet a little bit. Okay, the reason is, is because studies have simply shown that the presence of ketones in our blood preserves muscle tremendously. It preserves what is called leucine oxidation. The reason people take BCAAs is because they don't want leucine to go away because leucine is what's gonna keep our muscles nice and well there, right? Keeps them present. So if we lose leucine, we lose muscle but ketones actually allow leucine to stay present. It keeps them from burning up. So simply put, do some fasting, do some keto, and that's your result there. Okay, next up is going to be casein protein and beef protein. I put these together into one. And when I say beef protein, I don't mean eating beef. I mean those products out there that say that you, their, their protein powder is a beef protein powder, like made from ground up beef put into a powder form. Get real, okay, I'm gonna explain all this. Casein protein is marketed as a protein that's there to help uh, digest slow and give you overall muscle building benefit overnight. Here's the issue with casein. Casein is very hard on the digestive system. It's hard to break down. The reason it digests slowly is because it forms into what are called globules. So these globulins and these globules end up being slow to break down. That's hard on the system. But more importantly than that, they're high in what are called beta casomorphins or BCM7. These BCM7s act upon our opioid receptors within our brain, being very addictive, but they also cause a drug-like effect within our brain that can affect our dopamine levels, affect our serotonin levels, and literally make it so that we don't feel as good. It's not a good thing to get in the habit of taking. And the ultimate result that you're looking for just isn't that great. So it ends up being a waste of money and a waste of time. Then when we look at the beef proteins, Okay, these are just kind of a joke. Beef proteins are not made from instantized powdered beef protein. That's not how it works. They take ground up hooves, they take ground up snout and things like that and get some of the amino acids from it and then they throw some other amino acids in it to make a complete protein. So even if they have an incomplete protein because they're using low quality ingredients, they just throw cheap amino acids and they call it an actual protein when it's really just a compilation of amino acids. So it's not doing you any good. So the alternatives there are going to be very strategic. 
where you would normally use beef protein because it's supposed to absorb fast, I recommend using whey protein isolate. Whey protein isolate is going to absorb quick and it's going to be something that's going to give you that effect. Now, my personal preference, and if you want something that digests a little bit slower and gives you a more sustained result, which is ultimately what we want, go for a pea protein. Okay, studies have shown that pea protein and whey protein absorb in the body at the same rate. There's no real difference. And the cool thing is, for those of you that are watching this video, there is a link down in the description to get some Sun Warrior Warrior Blend pea protein. So not only have they nailed pea protein with the flavor, but they've also nailed it scientifically. You see, they've taken pea protein, they've added a little bit of hemp to make sure that they get the methionine, which is the missing amino acid that you normally need from pea protein. Long story short is there's an awesome deal on pea protein from some guys that know how to do it down in the description below. So if you're watching this video and you wanna get your alternative to whatever protein powder you're using right now, get my special discount down below. You're gonna save 15% off. So check it out after this video, don't miss it. Now let's move into the next thing, which is arginine. Arginine is not bad. Let me just preface this. Arginine is there to help you get a pump, right? It's the amino acid that is supposed to deliver more of a muscle pump and give you more muscle volume and all this stuff. It's not bad, it's just a waste of money. You see, arginine gets broken down. We have enzymes in our body known as arginase. They break down arginine, and specifically within our gut. Plus, we also have a bacterial effect that breaks down arginine. So really, when you take in arginine, you're not getting that much of an effect. It's just not that worth it. You can get something that's just as inexpensive that's called citrulline malate. Citrulline malate is a precursor to arginine. You see, when you take citrulline malate, it gets converted into arginine within your kidney. So you bypass the arginase breaking it down. You go straight to the kidneys where it actually gets converted into a usable form of arginine, and then it goes into the nitric oxide synthase pathway. So when it goes into the NOS pathway, you create nitric oxide, which is exactly what relaxes the endothelial layers of the cell or the, the uh, arterial wall. So it makes it so you can get more of a pump, deliver more blood, deliver more nutrients. Citrulline malate over arginine, just plain and simple. Last but not least, be very particular about your testosterone boosters. Testosterone boosters out there can temporarily elevate your overall levels of testosterone, but usually they're doing it through a, well, kind of nefarious way. If you're looking at horm pro hormones, things like that, you're not doing something good to your body. Okay, that you're doing yourself a disservice. Pro hormones are gonna act like essentially real hormones in your body just as precursors. So I don't recommend going that route. But then there's a lot of natural ones. There's things like uh, tribulus, there's things like wild yam, and they're not bad. They do elevate overall testosterone, but the problem is they don't give you more available testosterone. In the world of testosterone, we have what's actually available for usage, and then we have total testosterone. So total testosterone and free testosterone. Only 2% of our overall testosterone is ever really available for usage. 98% of it is bound to something called sex hormone binding globulin. Now, one of the ways that you can get around this is by utilizing a mineral known as boron. Boron doesn't increase your testosterone levels. What boron does is it unlocks testosterone to be free. So it takes that testosterone that's normally bound up and it unlocks it. There's a study that was published in the Journal of Physiology and Pharmacology that took a look at eight males and for one week, they had them take 10 milligrams of boron daily. You wanna know what they found out? After just one week, there was over a 28% increase in available free testosterone, just one week. Boron has been studied and studied and studied, and not only is it great for testosterone boosting, it's also great for magnesium absorption, it's great for modulating inflammation, it's just an all-around great mineral that you should be taking whether you like it or not, honestly. It's really, really good. Start at a low dose, go all the way up to like nine to 12 milligrams. Point is, this is gonna have a much stronger effect on testosterone levels than taking an expensive testosterone booster. We're talking a couple bucks on Amazon versus 50 or 60 bucks that's breaking the bank. Anyhow, I hope that this gave you a little bit of a summary on the supplements that are breaking the bank that really shouldn't be. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you in the next video.